Something's wrong with that kid. His head don't work, it never did. You better not cross his path. He's a chain smoking alcoholic sociopath. Mr. Franklin, the prison psychiatrist, was on a six month sabbatical. He'd had a nervous breakdown because Kevin kept setting his office on fire and throwing stuff at him. Kevin thought it was cool being able to hurt someone's brain without using a tire iron. He decided he'd try it more often. Get the hell away from my brother's book, you snot-nosed little bastard! Kevin was confused. The new psychiatrist looked just like Mr. Franklin, but he didn't seem quite as liberal. Kevin thought he'd do what he was told until he figured things out, which was probably going to take a good long time because Kevin was the kind of kid who rode the short school bus to class. Kevin's brain was special, in an Olympic kind of way. My brother's in the nut house because of you. I'm his identical twin in all ways but one. I don't take crap from dumb pricks like you. Kevin figured he'd bide his time before he taught the new Mr. Franklin that he didn't like being called names. My brother says you killed your dog when you were eight. Big surprise, a twisted freak obsessed with death. Go on, tell me how you got so hot on death. It may be that will shed some light on why you're such a dysfunctional failure. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You wanna step it up a bit, Reverend? I gotta take a leak so bad my teeth is swimming. Me too, Padre. Kevin's great aunt Betty had died. Kevin had never met her because she lived far away and because she had restraining orders against his parents, preventing them from coming within 500 feet of her. Let us not remember Aunt Betty for the self-inflicted gunshot wounds which took her life, but instead for her amazing talent with an accordion. Kevin's parents had applied for special permission from the courts so they could attend the funeral and see if they got anything in the will. Lousy cheapskate screwed us. They're the right dying. This funeral sucks. Let's go. Hold your horses, Tubby. I ain't had enough free sandwiches. Besides, this here's a real nice place. Maybe Betty's gonna leave us something after all. Hey, boy, come here. Go tell the effing knob who owns this house that you gotta go to the John. Get inside, grab as much jewelry as you can, meet us back at the punch bowl. You think I'm Tubby? You can stand to lose a few. <coughs> Kevin didn't mind being told to rob the house, since he was planning on doing it anyway. Besides, if he was the one doing the stealing, he figured he could keep anything really valuable for himself and screw his parents for their cut. Did the loot in the arse holes up, Tom? Good thinking, Boise. Let's get this party rolling. Kevin was surprised at how rich his relatives were. They sure did have a lot of precious heirlooms. Then Kevin found something even more precious. Aunt Betty's medicine cabinet. A rich person's medicine cabinet is a candy store of pharmaceuticals. And Kevin could sure tell that his aunt must have had a lot of personal issues. Kevin wondered why his family had a lot less than his relatives. Dad blamed the immigrants, feminists, and homosexuals, but Kevin wasn't so sure. Mostly because those were big words, and he didn't have a real good handle on what they meant. Also, Aunt Betty's candy was kicking in. Hurry up and get more stuff, you jug-eared psychopath! Kevin didn't like being called names, especially by his imaginary friend, Alan the Magic Goose. 
because that pretty much meant that Kevin was calling himself names. Thinking about how that could happen on a metaphysical level made Kevin's brain hurt. Let it go, moron. You ain't got the smarts to figure it out. Kevin had had it up to his ass with the goose. When Alan first showed up, Kevin thought it was cool to always have someone around to talk to. But Alan was wearing kind of thin and wasn't a cool delusion like the son of Sam's dog. Kevin figured he'd show the son of a bitch Alan a thing or two. He decided to beat the goose out of his head. Is that the best you got, lunatic? I don't think so, you alcoholic little delinquent. you dumb boy. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you get your old man's gun and shoot me out? What do you think of that, genius? Kevin was peeking on prescriptions and suffering a mild concussion. It was a pretty good buzz. He decided he'd just have to live with Alan and went to get the jewelry and finished cleaning out the bedroom. You guys sure you don't want no liquor? I hardly think this is the time or place to get drunk. 2 p.m. by my watch. Come on, let's chug one for Betty. Don't even say her name, Percy. We all saw you digging through her pockets during the viewing of the deceased. Why don't you and your family just go home? Yeah, well, why don't you and your family kiss my fat ass? You're acting like this is a party. Betty is dead. All of us are trying to come to terms with that, and then you and your brood show up and ruin it for everyone. Buffet's open, boys. Yeah! Good one, Ma. Give my hair pie for dessert. Yeah! Oh, Jesus! Look out! She's going down. She's going down. <laughs> In God's name, are you doing? Run, Thacko, run! After about 10 minutes, it occurred to Kevin that there was only one door, and he wasn't going to be able to run away. I want you out of here. I want you, your thievy little brat of a son, and your fat drunk wife out of here. Come again, arsehole! You're in for it now. You don't scare me. What did you call me? A fat alcoholic. <laughs> you kicked him like a bad habit, sweetie. You're the only bad habit I can't kick, sweetie. Come on, boys. I can tell when we're not wanted. Kevin was confused. On TV, people always cried at funerals because they were sad. It was strange because Aunt Betty's funeral was the most fun he'd had in years, especially because no one found the big diamond ring he'd hidden in his pocket. Welcome to the show. I'd like to introduce my guests. On the left is Donald. Hi. Shut your hole, you son of a bitch. That was a good episode. Get in the car, no time to pack. You gotta go, now. Why'd you do this time? Why is there blood and teeth all over the upholstery? Whose artificial arm is stuck to the passenger door? I just figured we needed a vacation on account of working so hard. We ain't got no money for no vacation. We got $50,000 is what we got. Holy Jesus. 
You didn't do nothing illegal, did you? In a daring daylight robbery, I found it. An unidentified assailant robbed an old woman of $50,000. Eat your dinner, boy. <laughs> hey, <Dillo. laughs> Where the hell is we going, anyhow? I don't Christly know. I didn't plan too much, so tired of just getting going. Hey, let's go to Vegas. Can't. I got warrants out in Nevada. Atlantic City? I got warrants. Daytona Beach? You got warrant. Oh, yeah. Kevin asked his parents if they could go to Ratland. The kids at school said it was really fun. <laughs> Sorry, boy. Me and the old man got a lifetime ban. Last time we was there, we got pretty tight and had a run-in with the road. He come on to me, so I worked him. I kicked the suspenders right off that four fingers free. As vacations go, Kevin thought this sucked and proceeded to vomit with disapproval and motion sickness. It don't look open. Then we'll open it. I promised my boy a pony ride, and I'll be damned if he ain't getting one. Kirby Taylor was the rubber band man working at the freak show. He'd been napping when Percy crashed the gate. What the? You must be the new act. Um, I'm Scurvy, the rubber man. Oh, can you bend everything like that? You must be new to the side show. Now, what's your talent? Pull my finger. No time for that. I promised the boy a pony ride, and I'll be a son of a bitch if that ain't what he's gonna get. That ain't a horse. It's close enough for the boy. Go, stupid cow. It ain't going. I got eyes, fatty. Go get with something. Get going, you stupid horse. It's a cow. Put a lid on it. I'm pretending for the boy. I need something better to poke it with. The old man was knocked out cold. Kevin's mom laughed so hard that she started to hyperventilate and passed out. Scurvy took the suitcase with the $50,000. Kevin didn't want to see Mr. Franklin's brother, so he decided to go into hiding and try and avoid him. But because Kevin was in a 10 by 12 concrete cell with nothing in it but a cot, the whole hiding thing didn't work out quite as well as he had hoped. Where are you taking the freak? To see Franklin's brother about making some sense out of his defective head. It's like putting a band-aid on a gunshot wound. <laughs> Time was running out, so Kevin figured he'd better come up with a plan real quick, so he wouldn't have to go see Mr. Franklin's brother. Kevin's parole officer, the family court judge, and the school board, in a 4-3 to three vote, decided to let Kevin back into school on the condition that he abstained from drinking and tried to get involved in school activities. Everyone thought this would help Kevin develop better people skills and mainstream him back into society. Kevin decided he'd join the choir because all you had to do was stand around and pretend to sing. Welcome everyone. I hope you're all as excited as I am about what will be God willing our most successful choir season ever. Now, how does that make everyone feel? We do it for the love of music, but more importantly because, well, you do need this credit to graduate. Kevin, what were you told about smoking? 
watching the other kids warm up would have made Kevin laugh if he'd been born with the ability to feel and express emotions. Since he wasn't, the sounds pretty much just got on his nerves, especially the ones coming out of Jimmy Thompson's mouth. Kevin was about to straighten that out when the choir director called for everyone's attention. It occurred to Kevin that just because you can't do something right away doesn't mean you can't do it at all. That made Kevin feel happier. Wonderful. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven with my little angels. If the soloists sound half as good as that, then I think we've really got a good shot at winning the all-city choir competition and really sticking it to those ignorant bastards from St. Joseph's Academy. Whitey Ho will audition the soloists in alphabetical order, beginning with Donna Bertram. I vow to thee, my country, vow to thee, my country. Oh, it was going to be a while before they got to the S's, and Kevin was pretty nervous, so he figured he'd sneak backstage and cure his stage fright with some cough syrup. Ladies and gentlemen, Hathaway cough syrup and rabbit dog cigarettes proudly presents an international recording event, the Kevin Spencer Jazz Funk Apocalypse, featuring on drums, Pete Lefty Wilcox. <laughs> on the guitar, Alan the Magic Goose, On bass guitar, a fire-breathing demon that is a manifestation of Kevin's rage at the world. And now, put your hands together and welcome Kevin Spencer! 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 Kevin Spencer! Where the hell is that little sociopath? Kevin was scared. He'd never tried to sing before especially in front of other people. He was as nervous as his first time showering in prison. Part of him wanted to run away, but the part of him that wanted to be popular and fit in told him to go for it. I'm waiting. Kevin tried to remember when he'd ever made such beautiful sounds. Everyone, say hello to the star of our show. That night at dinner, Kevin told his parents about the choir and how excited he was and how all the other kids were impressed, and how some of them even told him he was good and talked to him and everything. The contest was coming up in a few days, and Kevin wanted to know if his parents would come. My boy's gonna be a famous singer star, just like Babe Ruth. You get good pay for that? Ain't it enough the boy finally found something he don't suck at? Not sucking don't buy no booze and smoke. You getting paid, boy? The night before the competition, Kevin lay in bed and dreamed about being the best singer there and winning first place for his school. Then he dreamed about what it would be like to have eyes that could shoot laser beams and make things explode. Then he dreamed about all the things in his life that he thought could do with a good blowing up. Okay, children, let's all take a deep breath and relax. Focus on the job at hand and be the best you can be. Kevin, how are you feeling? Perfect. We've got a few more minutes. Let's all review our lyric sheets and our song order so when we get on stage, we can really put the screws to those stupid, ugly bastard kids from St. Joe's. It's only a hymn singing competition. They're just kids. 
Shut your son of a bitch trap, or I'll kick your face in. That was the St. Joseph's Academy. They sing so beautiful, you hardly suspect it's a school for special kids. Anywho, next on our list of competitors is the Boys and Girls Choir of P.W. Kearney Public School with featured soloist Kevin Spencer. Okay, kids, gather round, focus on me, forget about the audience, remember your cues, and let's kick some ass. Kevin was really happy and having fun, even though he was so nervous that he felt a little bit like he did when he woke up after a long night of drinking cough syrup. Kevin couldn't help taking a peek at the audience just to see if his parents were there. The two seats he'd reserved for them were empty. Maybe they weren't going to come after all. Part of Kevin was sad, but a bigger part of him figured it would probably be for the best since they'd been drinking since morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next song will feature soloist Kevin Spencer singing the selection. Watch where you're going, fatty. Ow, my head. Hey, boy. We're late because I couldn't use these tiny grade school toilets. Would you please sit down and be quiet? This is a public school choir recital, for God's sakes, not a cockfight. We couldn't find no parking, fatty. As I was saying, the next selection will highlight our featured soloist, Kevin Spencer. <laughs> Jesus, boy, you sound like a fruit. I think I pissed my pants. <laughs> Kevin was pretty upset. He really wanted to take a poke at his old man for embarrassing him in front of everyone. But since his dad was so far away, he figured it would just be easier to crank the kid beside him. Work him, boy. Work him. 